In the morning, my friends, how are you today? You're listening to St. Mark's Podcast from the soon-to-be-frozen solid Bemidji, Minnesota. Yes, that's right. Labor Day has passed, yellow school buses clog our narrow streets, and the most eager of leaves have already changed colors. But don't let that get you down. The word of the Lord overcomes all obstacles, even the looming northern Minnesota winter. If you're new to this podcast, welcome. It's my hope that this podcast is short enough to last about as long as it takes to drink a cup of coffee, but be impactful enough to stick with you longer than a cold piece of pizza that you're having with that cup of joe. Seriously, your mom worries about you. Our scripture-based devotions are designed to give you something to think about as you step out of the door into the world. Right now, we're working our way through the Gospels, but our content is varied through different parts of the Bible in the three years we've been doing this. So this week, we'll take a dive into Luke 10 and the parable of the Good Samaritan. I hope that you'll be blessed by it. I am always astonished that I can learn something new from these parables, despite the fact that I've been listening to them for more than 40 years. If you like what you hear, share it with a friend. If you look in the podcast description on the app that you're using, in every episode, there is a share link for you to email or to text to a friend. I've tried to make the link as obvious as possible. Let me know if it isn't at john.kirk at stmarkspemidji.org. Share it because it's studying the Word of God and faith in Jesus and His perfect life, death, and resurrection comes by hearing the Word. And salvation comes to us by faith in Jesus alone. You've heard it before. Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's John 3.16. Why would you not tell everyone? So stop eyeing that Lutvisk in the back of the cupboard. It's definitely past eight. Let's just listen to the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Luke chapter 10 reads, Turning to the disciples, Jesus said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings wished to see the things which you see and did not see them, and to hear the things which you hear and did not hear them. And a lawyer stood up and put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But wishing to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In the name of Jesus, amen. Love. Love is of the heart. Love God above all things and love your neighbor as yourself begins in the heart. And of the heart, Jesus taught, out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, slanders. These are the things which defile the man. It doesn't sound like from Jesus' description that there is much room left in the heart for any love of neighbor as self. But a man will not see that apart from the word of God. Works are recognizable among people. Human reason naturally admires good works. Reason sees only works and does not understand or consider faith. Therefore, human reason dreams that these works merit the forgiveness of sins and justify before God. So this opinion about the law of God sticks in people's minds. The mind must be recalled from these earthly opinions to God's word. The gospel and the promise about Christ Jesus must instead be set before all people. When we hear from God's law, love God above all things and love our neighbor as ourselves, when these works are commanded, these are commanded in the promise about Christ. But the promise about Christ must first be grasped, must first be believed. The heart must be cleansed from sin and changed by God through faith in the certain promise that all sins are forgiven in the blood of Jesus Christ shed upon the cross in order that the good works 
might flow forth from that cleansed heart and be able to produce the good works that are pleasing to God, because they are the works he commands. As Jesus clearly taught, apart from me, you can do nothing. And St. Paul said it quite clearly, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Christ Jesus kept the whole law of God for us. Christ Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for the lack of love of all sinners. Where the heart is right before God, that is, in faith in Christ Jesus, the believer is justified. There is no longer any need for him to justify himself. There is no need to assign to human works the glory of Christ that he has already accomplished by his death and resurrection. So the need for self-justification for the sinful heart becomes obvious. There's no need for it. It is one thing to lift high in speech the commandments of God and quite another to do what they say. But if the heart is right, there really is no need for any outward show of piety so that people might be seen by everyone as good and having a good heart. Self-justification. The good heart is simply not in any person by works. It must be created in them by God, who alone is love. As St. John said, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Why not? Well, because Christ has kept them for us. Because Christ creates a clean heart in us and renews a right spirit within us. But how? How can a sinful heart be made righteous and good and filled with God's love? Well, St. John again wrote, This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. A new heart? Through faith in Christ. Keeping the commandments? Doing good works? Works are pleasing because of faith in Christ. Works do not please without Christ as the atoning sacrifice. Without Christ, the commandments are not kept. Without Christ, keeping the commandments is not possible. But when Christ is grasped through faith, self-righteousness fades away because the heart finds rest and begins to love God and keep his commandment. The heart knows who its neighbor is. In the name of Jesus, amen. That's all there is for today, but we are so happy you took a few moments out of your busy day to listen to God's Word with us. Please consider subscribing to our podcast to hear more devotions like this, Monday through Friday, and to hear our Sunday sermons as well. We also cordially invite you to join us for church every week at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. If you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website at www.stmarksbemidji.org.